Hello and welcome back to Skaho Innovation Lab's little series of videos, masterclasses on configuring Reactor. And uh, we have uh, followed through a whole lot of things. So you see we are in the middle of a project here and I will urge you to watch the previous videos or read the PDF file just to mention this PDF file is uh, made by my team and they have um, a lot of teaching material ready for you that you can also read, not only watch on this channel. So what I want to do, because I kind of found myself uh, going nuts on uh, details I might not have or should not have done here, is uh, we, we need to just remove a few things. So I created an action here. I'll just quickly delete that from the previous video. And we could do the same up here. Just remove this action here. So this becomes blank. OK, that's that's fine. So we are ready to go through in, in this video where we'll cover how we can make multiple events on our buttons. And um, what I intend to do here, just quickly to show you what we have, we have this menu button. And as I'm pressing the lower edge, I'm cycling between visibility of these three layers over here. So just notice that on the left side. You can also see it visually on our controller. By the way, this is a PTC fly and we run this whole thing in simulation because I'm lazy. I don't want to hook up a camera and show it on a real controller. I could have done that. But it's just as good and destructive to see it here. It's exactly what you get in real life. So it's also pretty convenient for configuration. And pressing that button on the lower edge is just cycling through. We even set up that you could press it on the sides and then you could like go up and down, which may feel a little bit redundant, but it's actually an interaction scheme that is uh, being used in our four-way buttons quite a lot. And then finally, I have this one, which is just rotating a variable called channel one up to four. That variable is right here in the tree. So you can see as I'm pressing, it's just going through those things. They are using the same master behavior called navigation. So in this video, I would like to uh, get back to the uh, button right here and uh, change a little bit how it works. So what I um, no actually I yeah that that's what I want. Be, be, the the point of this video is to expand your knowledge into event handlers. For my event handlers, I would like to keep the cycle event handler. That's the one that's associated with the press on the lower edge. Okay, and. I want to do away with the uh, right and the left ones. Now, unfortunately, since I'm inheriting this from the master behavior, this is where I could, in fact, if I go to the master behavior, I could throw them out. But inside an inherited scenario, if I go to A6 and I open these up, I'm not able to because these are coming to me as a consequence of inheritance. This is why there's a checkbox called don't inherit. And I can do the same for right, don't inherit. And then they are disabled at this point. So let's just check this. Lower edge will work. Sides won't work anymore. Now, notice this one is actually using the same master behavior. So lower edge is going to cycle. What about these edges? They are also going to work because I did not disable it over there. So this um, change of in uh, or don't inherit flag actually disables the left and the right event handler. So what I want to do now is to create a top handler. So just top vmix. No, top top is fine. Uh, hey, choose any name that is meaningful to you. If you are lazy or if you are really diligent on finding a great name up to you. In this case, what I'll do is to make a binary handler. It will be of the type act down naturally edge filter is top edge. And then the mode is cycle up and roll over. The values that we are cycling would be the ones coming from the sorry, behavior. Uh, no, 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 wait. No, 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 we need to do something else. Now we are creating something specific here. We uh, okay, let me explain you what I really want to do. What I want to do is to say when vmix is selected, the top edge gets a special function that will cycle the channel names. I know it's redundant in what I'm doing here because we have that button just next to but I'm trying to teach you guys the flexibility and the awesome powers of what can be done, what kind of interactions you could actually develop using the uh, tools inside Reactor. So uh, take it as this example. OK, so let's uh, let's just get back to it. What I need to do here is to choose the variable channel and then I will add the all modifier that we did use in a previous episode. Once again, sorry for that not being visually clear, not a drop down. There are certain things that we're still working to get into this UI. So but this is Basically, what it's doing is to say, take all the options associated with the variable called channel 
and cycle through those as we are pressing the top edge. Actually, we can try it right away. So as I'm pressing the top edge, it's yeah, not cycling through. Bummer. And why is that? I would like to know. Um, it is cycling through down here. On the sides, it doesn't do anything. Up here, it is not really doing anything either. So I am sort of curious what is happening over here. Nothing. It has the bottom edge filter. So this is annoying. Ah, now I know. Now I know. It also gives me a chance to show you something else. So what it was doing was still manipulating this parameter up here, the IO reference that we gave to the whole behavior. Now, everything we have done so far with this behavior has started by the IO reference of the behavior. And it's so cool because otherwise you would have had to hard code it in so many places. It's also a foundational point about the inheritance that we are doing with the master behavior that you can define an IO reference on the top level and just change that and use the master behavior to, to have it manipulate that. But in this case, we are using master behavior as our foundation, but we are definitely doing something custom here. In this case, we want the top edge to not manipulate that parameter. We wanted to manipulate the other one. So this is why there is a IO reference field for each event handler that allows you to specify a different IO reference. So that's, of course, what I need to do. And thereby, I choose channel submit. So it actually made sense that it says none, because as I was trying to cycle up and roll over, it would have taken one of the options from the channel variable, which has no equivalent with the menu variable. So it just chose a, a wrong option, a, 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 an option that was not allowed. But now it should be different, OK? So let's just check here. Uh, we'll just go here. So just pick anything. I use the top edge. And you can see that it's actually cycling the channel variable. You can see it here. You can see it in the display there. So yeah, it is working, but it's also doing so no matter which state I'm in here. So my idea was to also show you that we can turn on and off event handlers depending on stuff. So and that is the active if again. You have seen it multiple times in this training already. Active if is a condition you can set up using system parameters to turn something on and off, anything from the visibility of a layer to feedback like the, the call of a button to, in this case, whether an event handler is actually being um, used or not. So let's pick that for the event handler top, active if, click here to edit it, and then let's pick the variable, say the variable menu, if that is equal to, and then we need to type in vmix as a string. Submit, submit. Then this will be active. Now, all that is left is really to try this, okay? So we are here in preset. What happens if we press the upper edge? Nothing. We are then selecting this one, press upper edge, nothing happens. VMix, press upper edge, channels are rotated. Yeah, that worked. So that almost makes me feel like we should, uh, yeah, first of all, having that button over here is clearly redundant. I'm not trying to say this is an awesome interactive design because why on earth are we even trying to have the upper edge do this? Now, in many cases, you are sometimes uh, short on space, you need to uh, make interaction designs that fits it all into one button. And four-way buttons from Skahoy are so awesome when it comes to this. So that's, of course, a design that you could imagine. Now, so, so just imagine what I'm showing you right now is if you have the, um, the extra button to actually show a channel selector for the vMix case next to, then probably that's what you would do and you wouldn't put it on the top edge. So alternative, we could say, alternatively to what I've just shown you, you could also say, OK, this button, its general availability should be associated with an active if. So I, I just clicked it here. We are on the training layer. I, I have, if I scroll down to the bottom after having shown all, you find active if for this general behavior. And here we can basically say, if menu is equal to vmix, then show this one. So. Did that get submitted into this field? I don't see it. So maybe we have found a bug, one of the rare bugs that could exist in a system like that. Maybe that is the case. But it also gives me a chance to show you guys how we could actually kind of, let's grab it from somewhere else. So 
We'll just get in here and see this is actually the, the raw value of the active if condition. So what if we just pick that and then we insert it over here by editing it raw. So like that. So let's just see what happens if we go to simulation mode and we click here. Voila. Then this behavior becomes visible the moment the value of the menu is VMAX. And then I could go change my channels as much as I want. And now I can't change them except I can on the upper edge, but we just can't see it because we don't know where that value is being shown right now. But back to VMAX, we have this selector. Back to VMAX, we can select more. Yeah, okay, let's just see, this is channel four. I just put it on channel two. Okay, we go here, press the button. Nothing should happen, nothing should happen. It's still channel two, okay. So it does work, it really does remove the behavior of that button when we did that. Now that we are in the land of detours, why not make a little detour where we make a menu where the, the three options, VMix, presets, and camera select is three separate buttons. So um, for that, we will create a little child layer over here that is just to group them together in a nice way. So um, broken out menu. So we'll just improvise a little bit here. And that we have broken out menu. It doesn't matter that it's on the top because I am going to hold down shift, just disable simulation mode, hold down shift. And for these on the broken out menu, I'll create behaviors. So we have three behaviors created up here for A, one, two, and three. I will select for all of these, I will select um, the set value behavior. Uh, just let's type in set. So I want, that means set a specific value, okay? And then I click uh, match value here. I would type in VMAX um, because that's one of the values that we want to set. And then of course the parameters that you set it for is the menu like right there. Okay, now we have all three selected and, and what I did now was setting it for all three of them. Of course, two of them should be something different. So that's what we will do um, right away here. Um, now, unfortunately, we need to actually type in the real labels as well. This is something that for technical reasons is not possible to get in. So whenever you use match value, the label you want it to say in the display has to be one that you enter. Sorry about that, but that is a limitation you could argue. Now, uh, oh, we actually can pick them. That's awesome. So, uh, ah, wonderful. Somebody improved this while I, while I was asleep. Nice. Okay, cool. Hey, <laughs> I already got it done. Awesome, guys. Thank you, team. Now, let's just try this out. Okay. So you can even see when you use the master behavior set value with this one. And trust me, there's a ton of stuff going on in here, which you don't have to carry about, uh, worry about, because we just picked the parameter. We picked this one to set a specific value, namely that value. And as we are now pressing these, you can see that it will be exactly the same as cycling the variable value over here. So that is pretty neat. Now, one thing that I thought was cool and you know exactly what is going to happen now is that I can change the underlying color of this by just going to the layer, picking a different default feedback color for this layer. So that's another little cool thing about layers. They don't have to be associated necessarily with visibility and so on. They can just be a way to group things and give them a common property like a, a common background color like you just saw. If you follow the uh, training material, you'll see that there is some instructions on how to use an index for the variables. You can refer to the values instead by their names, cam cell, or the values cam cell, vmix, and presets. You can also refer to them with numbers like 0, 1, 2, and so on. We use that sometimes in our configurations because it can be useful for general behaviors to be independent of the actual names of the variables that they are using. But I won't cover it in this video because I think it's a little more rare that you find it. But go read that material if you're interested.